Hello, welcome to the Spiritualist Circle of Light. This is our dream class, and we are continuing with Nigel Hamilton's book, Awakening Through Dreams, The Journey Through the Inner Landscape. Now, in our last class, we talked about the Negreto process, which is the process of decay. And we are going to talk a little bit about the next stage. Uh, he likes to use the alchemical process of refinement, of which there are several stages. The next stage is the operation of salutio or the operation of dissolution. Uh, this is focuses on the fixed points within our psyche or our soul. Think of these as emotional buoys. Every time we, we have experienced some strong emotion, we typically leave some kind of a marker. Usually it's in the form of a buoy. And just to give you an example of what I mean by this, uh, my father transitioned when I was about 13 or 14. And at that time, we went to the funeral, which was out of state. We stayed with some relatives in Louisiana, and there was this pond in their backyard, so to speak. And during our stay there, I would go there often and walk around it. Uh, an uncle commented to me, you know, from an Italian family. And so he tells me that you're now the man of the house. Well, I didn't know what that meant. So I spent some time walking around that pond, contemplating what he had said contemplating my my father's death it wasn't a pleasant one uh it was violent it was an explosion and you know as as our stay progressed we returned naturally as was several years ago but you know it was a very emotional time for me and i left an emotional buoy there. There was a part of me that continued to walk around the pond there, and deep in contemplation. Or perhaps it wasn't contemplation. Perhaps it was anxiety, uh, fear. You know, fear is a strong emotion. At least that's what they tell us. But what, you know, if we use our emotions, if we explore them, if we listen to them, if we determine what the message is that they are bringing forth, they can be very useful. And fear is often due to a lack of information, you know, fear of the unknown. Well, the reason we are afraid of the unknown is because we don't know. Now, and information can come in a variety of ways. Information can come from a book. Information can come from a, a, a television program, a video. But the most important information that comes to us is through experience. And it is experience that is, is I got this all messed up here. It is the lack of experience that actually causes the fear because no matter how often, how long, how hard we train until we actually put some of what we've learned into use, you know, there's that anxiety. Public speaking, you know, many people have problems speaking in public. And I was, I was one of them. So I took a class. And that class trained me what to do, 
to you know to take notes how to use visual aids you know this was the purpose of the course and even though i had all this training i was still apprehensive i hadn't used it yet and you know that was 20 30 years ago and fortunately i've got some experience but still you know there is that 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 moment of anxiety that moment of apprehension it never goes away but this is what fear is about and fear is a strong emotion another strong emotion is anger you know anger is has a message in and of itself whenever we get angry it's it's due to some type of stress or it's due to a a what i like to say is a poor position if you're in a debate or a discussion and you're in a weak position a lot of times we compensate by getting louder and and louder you know that's a sign of a weak position but with that there are other types of anger and it's usually you know uh, uh just a buildup of energy stagnant energy actually and just to give you for instance with that i am in the process of building an office in the basement and one day i was you know one problem right after another after another after another and i've got this this anger that's building in me and then i just release it you know and naturally how do we release anger we act impulsively the purpose of the anger was because nothing was moving in the direction that i wanted it to go and i was not adapting properly so all of our emotions have messages for us and it's it's these fixed points, you know, when they become, oh, not sure what's the best way to express it. Traumatic experiences, you know, they form these fixed points within us, you know, these emotional buoys. And, you know, our dreams, our dreams, re they reflect the the impact of our reality and in so doing they trigger these other memories and i don't want to say that 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 mine just filters through like a file of, ah there that one's like it. it doesn't necessarily work that way but there are there is research that suggests that these these traumatic events you know they stay with us for years months and it's during our dream state you know when we experience something in the the common reality within you know the, the few day span here you know when we encounter something it it can trigger something in our memory and that is the pattern that is released that pattern is released in our dreamscape and if we're able to recognize this if we are able to recognize this it gives us an opportunity to examine the to examine the circumstances around it because the dream will not necessarily be about what we encountered within the last few days the dream will reach back and pull something forward typically it's something that is unresolved and it brings that forward and in doing so we see the pattern you know, hamilton focuses on patterns well, you can call them themes if you like, but there is a pattern that takes place with this. Hmm. 
the only pattern that I can can think of that comes to mind easily is one I've talked about in several classes, and that is the, again the dream where I am babysitting a child, but the child is never there. The child is never there in the dream, but I know that I am babysitting. It's just, you know, you know it. And the mother comes in hysterical and I'm not able to respond. So she continues her her hysterical activities and she moves into a different part of the house and as she's continuing continually doing this i begin to gather up my stuff and i step outside of the house and i look for my vehicle now i step outside of a house which means this is something that's no longer personal if it was inside the house it's personal see this is the house your body is the house remember the cliches the temple your home this is this is it this is the home of the soul this is the temple of the soul so when i stepped outside of that it was no longer personal and that's the thing things that occur within a home within your home but in particular they're personal when they occur outside they become impersonal but they still have a bearing so this was no longer personal i had resolved much of it but not all of it but anyway i am i step outside of the house and i begin looking for my vehicle and then the woman comes outside and talks to me about her daughter and how much her daughter likes me and and i express how i am uncomfortable with that now this is a fixed point because it is in these instances that i feel very anxious um, in my professional life as a minister I feel uncomfortable when I am in a room with a female. It's nothing personal, see, outside the house. It's not personal. But there have been, in my past, there were several incidents where complaints of sexual harassment were made. Of course, upon... uh, uh, Upon investigation, nothing was proven, but it makes me apprehensive whenever I'm in a room with a woman, a, a female, and there's just her and I. And during this pandemic, you know, it's not something I have to worry about, but for some reason, this came up. So there was something that was occurring that was making me a bit anxious it triggered a memory and it was not it was not the the accusation itself it was the proposed rumor because there was no child in the dream. So it really had nothing to do with the child. And it really didn't have anything to do with the mother, even though she was female. It was the the words behind it. And those are impersonal. That was a pattern that was brought forth. You know, what people... Uh, how people view me is important to me. How they respond to me is important to me. And I present myself in as best light as that I can. 
And that's what this particular dream was about. It was revealing this pattern that I am apprehensive of how people see me. Now, this may, be, may have been tied to an event that occurred, or it may have been something that was, that was approaching. Now, I've been doing a lot of stuff with the association that the spiritual circle of light is associated with, the independent spiritualist association. And with that comes a lot of responsibilities. And with those responsibilities, you know, I'm very apprehensive about how I am viewed. Uh, in this particular instance, I was working on reshaping the bylaws. And within the association, there were some concerns. And I tried to allay those concerns by telling them that I was maintaining the integrity of the bylaws, just cleaning them up, simplifying them. But I'm getting off track here. This is what they mean by the dissolution of fixed points within our psyche or within our soul. Our dreams reveal these fixed points. They reveal these patterns. And it's through the revelation of these patterns that we are able to, to dissolve them. And one of the things that the author comments on is that whenever water is in movement or is an essential part of the dream, you know, flowing water, a stream, a river, you know, it's, it may be an indication that a process of dissolving is taking place. Because what does water do? It dissolves. Water seeks the 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 path of least resistance and when it does meet resistance it moves through it of course it tends to undermine things so i don't know if water movement would be a good example to use but there isn't one better and dreams or i mean water typically represents the emotional state if it's calm or if it's turbulent, it reveals the emotional state. And it's the emotions that drive our dreams, particularly anxieties. So when you are when you experience a dream that's that's troublesome, look for what kind of anxiety that may have driven it that may have caused it because it's the anxieties that trigger the dreams that's and it's the emotion that moves the dream forward uh, i had someone uh, share a dream with me uh, that they were concerned about so i was given a dream to interpret a short time ago and in the dream there was someone who was trying to to shoot them with a gun. They missed, but they tried several times. Now, remember beforehand, guns are typically are family related. So someone with a gun is, this is about family. You know, shooting, that's just an activity, but they missed. May have something to do with it, maybe not. But the idea is that there's some anxiety there that has to do with family. And interestingly, uh, I believe it was later, this person uh, uh, was getting ready to go to their family for Thanksgiving and Family members were ill, and, and they canceled it. But there's that anxiety. Family problems, killing, but missed. Okay. Uh, given our present situation with the pandemic, 
could easily have been the COVID and that would be a concern of hers. So, and in another dream, someone was again trying to kill them and they were using a needle to inject a liquid, but the liquid didn't affect them. So needle is a type of knife. So there's some backstabbing here. And what is it with the, with the idea of backstabbing? It's not that somebody is trying to stick it to you. It's that you, you feel as though someone is sticking it to you. And this person was, was participating in a lot of craft shows. And due to the pandemic, of the, they were being canceled. And the turnout was, was less, you know, it's the idea, you know, what's what comes to mind to the cliche, you're killing me with all of these changes. They're killing me. They've can these cancellations, you know, there's the idea there in the liquid liquid is flow. Here we go with this, with this movement of water dissolving. And here is the thing with it. Yeah, okay, it's 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 killing you, but it's not. It's an emotional response, and it's you know, you are adapting to it. That's what it's essentially saying. Adapt to it, because what does water do? Water fi- adapts. It finds the path of least resistance. It's very adaptable. So that's the idea with that. Now, I know this didn't have those, these last two particular dreams didn't have anything to do with the dissolution of fixed points, but it may have because of the anxiety with the shows canceling, it would become a fixed point unless it was resolved. So. And that's what the alchemical operation of Solustio is about, the dissolution of issues that are occurring within the psyche or the soul, or actually, I should say, the dissolution of these emotional buoys that can form and have formed. I hope you found this useful. If you did, please, please donate. There is a donation button available at our website, brdnsky.com. If you don't feel comfortable donating through that, you can always send payment. The address is there as well. Make any payments out to the spiritualist circle of light we also have a qr code if that works try it out just hit pause and get while you get your camera ready also there are links to other videos at our website browse the website plenty of information there for you with regarding spiritualism metaphysics, personal growth, all of that. And thank you for joining us and thank you for allowing us to share.